What's up, Urban Acolyte family? My name is Prince, and I'm an Urban Acolyte. And in this episode of Star Wars Chats, I want to discuss an article that just came out um, regarding uh, Star Wars moving beyond the Jedi. So if you haven't heard, we've got a title for Star Wars Episode 8, and that is The Last Jedi. Before I get to um, to the topic, I just want to give a shout out uh, to my team because I haven't shot at them out in a while, giving them their props. I want to start out by um, shouting out my main man, Chris Ryans, up in Philly at Atomic City Comics. Uh, Chris wants to hook up and uh, start doing some some t-shirt designs for the channel and I want to hear from you guys if you're interested in uh, Urban Acolyte t-shirts I've got a few ideas uh, I'm gonna get with Chris he's already he already wants to do one with my uh, my outro uh, y'all keep on breathing um, we're gonna have to change that though because Samiko is actually responsible for that that tagline so we're gonna have to change it to what it's actually supposed to be the y'all part is kind of me adding I also want to thank Chris on, on video in front of all of you guys because he hooked me up with some gear. All right, so I did that uh, video for uh, his Rogue One talk and he got me um, a Death Trooper and uh, some a bunch of comic books. I'm actually going to use uh, this Star Wars Insider, some pictures from this and uh, uh, this uh, variant edition cover for The Force Awakens uh, movie comic book by my homie uh, Chuck Wendig. I'm going to be using the, these images for sure. Uh, in my videos about Finn uh, and those lightsaber scenes being cut that I've been talking about forever. I'm going to do my workout after this video and then I'm I'm really going to really for really real going to record that. And if I don't get it up tonight, it'll be up tomorrow, depending on uh, what goes on with work. Shout out to uh, Samiko, my sister from another mister. If I don't do it uh, tomorrow in tomorrow's video, because I might record it today. Um, ha early happy birthday to Samiko. Um, tomorrow's her birthday. And of course, got to give a shout out to uh, my favorite Egyptian. All right. So let's get to uh, the article. Uh, this is by Andrew Todd. I believe he's a New Zealander. And he asked the question, is Star Wars moving beyond? On the Jedi. So I'm going to read this article and then we're going to open it up for discussion. All right. So today's reveal of the title, Star Wars The Last Jedi, can mean only one thing speculation. The internet masses have traded questions as to whether the title refers to Luke or to Rey, or whether it refers to a Jedi or some Jedi. But the true meaning of the title could be found in the expanding nature of the Force itself. Only a Sith deals in absolutes, Obi-Wan Kenobi says in Revenge of the Sith, failing to realize the irony of his statement. Of course, the Jedi deal in absolutes. They themselves represent an absolute, that of the light side of the force, countering the Sith on the dark side. The prophecy that originated in the prequels, that of bringing balance to the force, has always conjured visions of the Sith and the Jedi at opposing ends of a set of scales. But what if we move both to the center of the scales? In Rogue One, we caught glimpses at groups that worship the force, but don't practice Jedi or Sith dogma. And in Star Wars, Wars Rebels, Tom Baker's mystic character Bindu, under whom series regular Kanan Jarrus studies, rejects notions of the light or dark side of the Force, preferring an up-the-middle path. The polar extremes that dominate most existing Star Wars lore only ever cause conflict. A more balanced approach seems altogether healthier. Here's what we know. At the opening of The Last Jedi, Luke Skywalker is, for realsies, The Last Jedi. We assume that Luke will train Rey and she'll become a Jedi and so on. But remember, Luke threw himself into exile after failing to restore the Jedi Order. Perhaps Luke spent all this time meditating on the Jedi's weaknesses as well as their strengths. Perhaps he teaches Rey not to follow in his footsteps but to learn from his mistakes. Perhaps a more reflective centrist force philosophy can even bring the Knights of Ren back on side, led by what narrative convention assures us will be a redemptive arc for Kylo Ren. And thus the Jedi come to an end, with Luke Skywalker the last of their order. 
This is, of course, all speculation, but it's speculation that appeals to me if for no other reason than it covers the vagaries and subtleties of life far more comprehensively than the Jedi-Sith duality. People don't exist as pure good or evil. They're complex creatures with good and bad attributes coexisting inside the same individual. Such an approach would represent a radical departure for Star Wars, which is traded on the black and white, good-evil binary since its opening frames, but these are new Star Wars movies for a new age. An age in which audiences demand shades of gray in their entertainment, and in which polarized opinions and dogmatic groups have led to societal near-disaster in reality. I don't know what The Last Jedi means. For all we know, it could be a straight adaptation of the Expanded Universe book by the same name. But there are clearly interpretations of the Force that haven't been fully explored, and the Lucasfilm Story Group is clearly interested in exploring them. That vastly broadens the scope of what the Force can mean and suggests we're in for exciting new stories to come. All right, so this uh, this is really addressing uh, the the fact that Maybe it's it's it might be time for the Jedi as we've known them to end. And I agree with that. But I really feel like a lot of people are overthinking this title. The Last Jedi. How did the Force Awakens start out? Luke Skywalker is the last Jedi and he's gone. Right. He is the last of the Jedi. And Ryan Johnson, I reported this in uh, the video from a week or two ago. The five things that Ryan Johnson has revealed about Star Wars Episode eight. And that's that he had the title for episode eight as soon as he started writing the manuscript meaning as soon as he saw what the force awakens was going to be meaning the first cut of the movie because that's what he had based his original uh, manuscript on uh he just de he decided this is going to focus on luke luke is going to be heavily involved in this the theme for the force awakens is where is luke skywalker who is luke skywalker and in the force awakens they answered where is Luke Skywalker? Episode eight is going to answer the latter, the second question. Who is Luke Skywalker? Luke Skywalker is the last Jedi. What does that look like? What does that mean? What has Luke learned while he's been exploring the galaxy, uh, searching for the, the source of the Jedi to rebuild the Jedi order? In the process, someone turned to the dark side. That's what always happens. They turned to the dark side. They wiped out the Jedi Order. The same thing that his father did, right? And it, the irony is that the person who turned to the dark side and kills the other Jedi <laughs> is the descendant of the person who just did this, who put them in this situation. So I feel like Luke, when he goes into self-exile, one, we don't exactly know why he went into exile. All we really know is that he went in search of the first Jedi temple. Why did he stay there? Well, I think that one of the reasons he had to go there was now that we're seeing these this idea of these satellite Jedi temples, places that are strong in the force, these locations, you can begin to communicate with uh, with people across vast distances. Of course, uh, we saw that in Star Wars Rebels with uh, Yoda and the Jedi Temple on Lethal. Of course, Yoda was still alive, but perhaps Luke needs to be in one of these places in order to uh, communicate with them, uh, with uh, Yoda, with Obi-Wan, possibly with Qui-Gon, and who else? Maybe other people knew how to preserve, how to uh, become, I'm going to call them Jedi, uh, uh, Force Immortals, right? I, I want to say Taoist Immortals, but they knew how to preserve their essence beyond death in the Force, right? Maybe there were other people, and Luke needs to go to a place, the first place, want to discover how did the how were the Jedi when they first started out? Where did where did they decide that they're going to only focus exclusively on the Ashla and ignore the Bogan completely? Right. Because balance this thing that that uh, Andrew, that's your name, right? Andrew Todd, that he brings up. It's already been introduced into the lore. The Jedi, as the Bindu says, focus on the Ashla. And the problem is, is that they began to ignore the Bogan. And then uh, being uh, the 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 people who hoard all of the knowledge of the force, 
hoard all of the knowledge in their archives regarding the Sith, regarding uh, these other religions on Jeddah, anything to do with the Force, they say we're the experts, right? We we can manipulate the Force. These Guardians of the Wills, some of them, they can't manipulate the Force the way we, we can. So they lock, they shut themselves up literally in an ivory tower on Coruscant. And Pablo Hidalgo has said this numerous times on Twitter that they they became the thing that that they seem to want to be against right and in in uh in Taoism, you know we they say extreme yang leads to extreme yin right if you're extreme on the ashla side eventually the tables will turn and you become uh an agent of the bogan right and we literally saw that i'm not pulling this out of the air right uh, during the Clone Wars in um, uh, Barriss Offee, this is what she said in Ahsoka's trial, right? That the Jedi have become agents of the dark side. The Jedi as peacekeepers, as the light bringers, became the agents of chaos. They spread chaos. And what happened? Anakin Skywalker turned to the dark side and he brought peace order, justice, security to my new empire, right? The the dark side, the Sith were the ones who ended up bringing peace. And of course, the, the way that the dark side works, the nature of the dark side is it is all consuming. You, it's a bottomless pit of hunger, of longing, of desire, right? They, they, of course, they brought peace, but then, uh, by seeking more power, they brought more chaos into the the galaxy right and so the jedi had to rise up to restore balance and that was done by anakin literally turning on his master and throwing him you know into a reactor shaft thus bringing balance to the force of course the force went dormant for whatever reasons and that's why we have an awakening an awakening of new ability uh people who uh, were closed off to the force are now becoming aware uh it's like a, a literal revival right uh, to to purposely use religious terms. There is a revival of the force, right? If you're a Pentecostal or you know something about Pentecostalism, you'll understand what I'm saying. Or just go back to the day of Pentecost in Acts in the Bible, right? Uh, the 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 uh, followers of Jesus uh, said they had tongues of of, of flame, of tongues of fire above their heads, and they had started having abilities. They could speak languages that they couldn't speak previously. They could perform miracles, right? So the Force Awakens, it's literally a revival. Now, where they go from there, we don't know. Like I said in the last video, when the title was revealed, uh, Daisy Ridley in the pro almost at the end of shooting says, I don't know if Ray is a Jedi yet. She's learning from Luke Skywalker, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to be a Jedi. And what Colin Trevorrow said uh, about hit about episode nine and Ray's uh, role in this saga is that she has a bigger meaning for the galaxy as a whole. So maybe she is going to become like the apostle Paul. She is going to not just spread the, a, a, or create a new Jedi order, but she'll spread uh, the knowledge of the Force to help awaken the children of the Force who, at, at this time, don't know how to reach out and touch the Force in order to to res to truly bring balance back to the galaxy. Another thing to think about is like th there's this mention of gray. There there needs to be gray, right? All of these uh, Supreme Leader Snoke theories suck. And the reason they suck is because people keep trying to identify Snoke with a Sith. Snoke is this person. They turn to the dark side and they blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, just freaking pay attention. Snoke is a new character. He's not a Sith. He wants Kylo Ren to be in the embodiment of a new type of force user, one who uses the light side and the dark side. He's already been trained as a Jedi. Now he needs to be trained in the dark side. If Snoke were some, if Snoke were Vitiate or um, Nihilus or Palpatine or Darth Plagueis or Darth Tenebris or Darth Bane or whoever else, these dumbass theories try to say that Snoke is. And I mean, I, I, I don't. Well, yeah, I do mean to insult everybody who's made these dumbass videos because look, just pay attention, right? If Snoke were some old Sith Lord, 
Why would he be interested in it? It's not, I want to take this Jedi and turn him to the dark side. It's, I want to take this dark Jedi and I want him to be of the light and of the dark. And the fact that he is the descendant of the chosen one means that uh, literally they're trying to turn him into the father of Mortis, right? The father of Mortis could balance the son and the daughter. That's what Snoke wants Kylo Ren to be. He wants him to reach the full potential that Anakin Skywalker didn't reach, right? And I don't think Snoke is a big fan of, of, of Darth Sidious. If he even knows that, 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 uh, Palpatine was a Sith Lord, which isn't something that's been established in anything yet. There's no, been no mention of Darth Sidious. Uh, so how could Snoke be Plagueis or any of these other people if he doesn't even know who Vader's master was, um, at this time? It just hasn't been established yet, right? That's, that's like the, the, the reason everyone's Snoke theory sucks. Aside, besides the fact that Snoke is going to be like an eight foot tall puppet, um, uh, and, and be done with practical effects in episode eight. If the rumors that I've heard have been true, I guess I just wasted the video that I was going to do on that, but I don't know how much I could say about, Hey, Hey guys, Snoke is going to be pra uh, practical effects puppet for episode eight. And, uh, they'll, they'll use visual effects, uh, to animate his face. So, uh, you know, Andy circus can still do an amazing performance as Snoke. Right. But anyway, I want to end this on something. I keep saying this. I've said it in numerous videos. Eventually, people are going to pay attention. Or you know what? You guys pay attention because if you're subscribed to this channel, you watch everything, that makes you the smartest uh, Star Wars fans of people who watch these channels on YouTube. And that's not to say anything bad about Dash or or uh, Alex's channel, Stupendous Wave, but there are some big Star Wars channels that make some stupid ass stuff. And uh, you know what? It, the, the kids that watch those videos and follow them because YouTube is for kids. Hey, that's great. Make your money. But I'm not going to watch any of this shit you talk about because it's stupid. So, I'm going to end this on the epilogue from the junior novel, from the, the junior novelization of The Force Awakens. And this is going to hammer home why there has to be, if not Jedi, people who can teach Jedi stuff, if that makes sense. All right. So once there was a mystical order of Jedi Knights who served as the guardians of peace and justice in the galaxy. Many were the heroes in their ranks, heroes that went by the names of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Yoda, and Anakin Skywalker, but like the Republic they defended, the Jedi were betrayed from within. Their order was extinguished, and despite great effort to rekindle it decades later, the new flame would not hold. The Jedi remained all but extinct. Once there was a girl who called herself Rey. She had lived alone for years until she recognized the value of family and friends. With two of these friends, she piloted a starship to a remote world. She landed on an island surrounded by a blue-green sea. Stone stairs carved into the island's mountain led her to a clearing. Here waited the hermit she had come to find. Once there was a man who was born with the name Luke Skywalker. It was not a name he had been called in a long, long time. He lived alone, inhabiting this peaceful island on this lost planet. He allowed the girl to stare at him before he removed his hood. His robes were simple. His hair was white. A beard separated him from his youth, just as the remoteness of this planet separated him from his past. But now he had been found. Once there was a lightsaber that had passed from one hand to another. Its blade was bright, its color blue. The girl who possessed it now held it out to the man who had possessed it long before. He looked at her and then at the hilt in her hand, as if it were a memory he had tried to forget. Once there was a great knowledge of the Force, an energy field created by all living things that bound the galaxy together. The Force was what gave the Jedi their power. It had allowed them to accomplish great physical and mental feats and to turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. Yet when the Jedi were hunted down and destroyed, knowledge of the Force seemed to die with them. For many years afterwards, individuals sensitive to the Force possessed neither the instruction nor the insight to properly call on it. Its true power remained dormant in their lives, a potential never tapped. Eventually, scarce evidence of its presence led few to believe that the Force had ever existed at all. Yet within the girl and the man and the lightsaber held between, the Force stirred anew.
So let me know your thoughts down below on what you think uh, this The Last of the Jedi means. What do you think Luke's role in Episode 8 is going to be? And how do you see uh, Rey as being part of that? Is she Will she be the last Jedi? Is this the last of the Jedi, meaning Luke and his apprentice Rey? Or is 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 it just we have to wait until we get more details. So like I said, leave me your thoughts down below. I'll be checking back to see what you guys have to say. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so that you can take your first steps towards becoming an urban acolyte. Go ahead, make the commitment to making real life changes in your life so that you won't be the last Jedi, but the first urban acolyte. Make sure to continue to support the channel by checking out some of the other videos and supporting us over on the Amazon store so you can get your Vader's Wrath hoodie. I'm not wearing one yet, but I will be soon. And uh, that's all I've got for now. So thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing and may the force of others be with you always.